Hello everybody and welcome back to another Ravens Updates and Happy New Year, Happy 2022. Uh, the day that this is being released, it is the 3rd of January, three days into the new year. I hope it started off with a bang for all of you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and get the shell out of the way. You know what it is. Come on. We, we all know what it is. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Subscriptions really help out. And my goal is to try my hardest to reach 20,000 subs by the end of the month. I know we won't reach it, but hey, we all got a dream, right? Um, please don't forget to like the video. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, your questions, and your concerns. I always read the comments. And also go check out the Teespring store. We got lots of cool merch. Um, but I'm going to be taking down the Claire Claws merch as of the end of this week. So please get it while it's still available. And also don't forget to check out the Ruthless uh, merch as well. New merch will be coming out hopefully later this month. Anyway, guys, let's get on to the video. So... Let's get the big stuff out of the way. Okay, first of all, people have been asking me this a lot. A lot of people were asking me this in my last uh, For Honor stream. What do I think about For Honor's Conk rework testing grounds? I've only done a little bit of the testing grounds with Conk because, honestly, I like the testing grounds, but I can only take so much of it before I start to pick up on patterns, and I just said, eh, I'm taking a break. Um, I don't care very much about the um, Dominion reworks. It, they don't really affect the play for me. For me, it's all about the hero reworks, and we're only getting one hero rework, which is Conk. And yeah, you all know exactly what I'm going to say. He's OP. We knew he was going to be OP when they reveal him. He's got way more than he really needs to be effective. Um, and I'm not a, a good enough player to be much of a match against a good Conqueror. So, genuinely, it's like... I don't know what else to say other than he's way too OP. Now, if you're going to ask what how, how would I change him, I genuinely am not sure off the top of my head because i like a lot of what they gave him i don't know what i'd want to get rid of personally but if you want to know my thoughts on the new for honor concrete work there it is if i'm being honest right now i'm uh, i'm taking a slight break from for honor just a small one to be working on halo but i'll get into why i'm doing that in just a little bit let's get on to move movies and videos that you can expect in the next few days so i am working on the next for honor and glory chapter that will be coming out this month i hope you're excited for that next chapter left it on a pretty cool note i think so that will be coming out soon also speaking of for honor legend of richard blackthorn the story of my black uh sorry the story of my lawbringer will be coming out very soon i hope you're excited for that i've been working on that it's going to be really really cool and of course you've got your heroes in history berserker uh that will take a little bit more time because here's the thing Look, I think we all know what Berserker is most likely based on, but before I go jumping into making the video, I want to cross-reference a lot of my research. I want to look at a lot of different other sources to make sure that I'm getting it as accurate as I possibly can. So it's just going to take a little bit longer to get that one done, but I promise it'll be worth it when I'm done with it, right? Right, that's the way it ought to be. Okay, so um, let's move on to non for Honor related uh, topics. And not to say that For Honor has lost it, uh, lost me yet. I still love For Honor. It's still my favorite game ever, and I play it religiously. But I wanted to take a break because um, right now For Honor is in kind of a stagnant point. We're kind of just waiting on the new hero to come out. And uh, I think a lot of us feel the same way. So right now, a lot of people are just taking breaks and trying new stuff. And right now, I am working with Halo. Now, why am I working with Halo? Well, for one thing, um, my brother for Christmas got me Halo Infinite. And as I've said before, I know very little about the Halo lore. I've only played Halo Reach and only maybe a little bit of three, like maybe one or two missions of three, but that's about it. And the thing is, I have a very complicated history with Halo, you know? Uh, my history with Halo is this. When I was in middle school, I had these two friends, um, Charles and William. Very nice guys, very cool, but they invited me over for their birthday party one time. And for their birthday, they rented a um, movie theater where we played video games on the big screen. It was really cool, but the game that they brought in was Halo 3. And we were playing Halo 3 on this big screen. I'd never touched Halo before. I knew nothing about the game. And instead of teaching me how to play, as soon as Charles and William learned that I didn't know how to play, and all their other friends there knew that I didn't know how to play, they bullied the heck out of me on the game. They didn't teach me how to play. They didn't teach me the moves. They didn't teach me the controls. They just gave me the control and said, have fun. And I got wasted in every multiplayer match, which left a very sour taste in my mouth towards Halo for a long time. I didn't enjoy it. But now that I have Halo Infinite, I figure before I get into Halo Infinite and start playing that, 
I need to learn the full story of Halo. So I also got the Halo Master Chief Collection. So I have made it my mission to play through all the Halo games, the main games. I don't know anything about Halo Wars yet. I'll think about that. But for now, I'm playing the main Halo games. And I'm really going to work my way through those games as best I can. Now, right now, at, at the time of me making this, I have played Halo 1. I've played Halo 2. I'm working on Halo 3. And um, I'm planning on replaying Halo Reach. Playing Halo ODST. Halo 4. Eventually Halo 5. And then Infinite. So I will be working through every single game. That, that is the ultimate plan. When I finish playing all those games, I'm going to make a video where I rank the Halo games. Uh, in my opinion, you know, it's not, not going to be based on mechanics or anything like that, just which ones I enjoyed the most. And I also want to make a video talking about something interesting that I have never really talked about on this channel. We talk about Medieval Warfare a lot, and there's a lot to go into, and I still haven't covered everything there is to talk about Medieval Warfare. We'll still cover more. But there is something that we haven't talked about, and that's warfare on a galactic scale. Space warfare, like the stuff we see in Star Wars, or Halo, or Warhammer, or things like that. What are the implications of space war? How would it look differently than medieval warfare, and how would it look the same? You'd probably be surprised how similar the two might be. So we're going to be talking a bit about the implications of a space war or galactic war in science fiction, and how it can relate to and be similar to or different from real-world medieval warfare. It's, it's fascinating. I think it'll be a very fun video to make, but that'll take some time. I want to finish playing through Halo and make that, you know, something that I want to talk about more. So, with all that out of the way, um, as for my other uh, channel stuff, Fantastical History Hybrid Humans is coming out. Uh, the poll is in. Everyone wanted hybrid humans. Now, you might be wondering, what is a hybrid human? In short, a hybrid human, from my own definition, is stuff like demi-humans from Rising of the Shield Hero. Basically, think a humanoid, like basically a human, but with some animalistic traits, like if you've seen like Japanese anime Neko, or like Neko girls, like cat girls, dog people, um, basically people with animal-like traits. How would they live in a human society? We'll talk about that, although I think you can probably guess how they would adjust to human society. In terms of my writing, Death's Diary is getting a new entry coming up, and so is Troy and Frost. I'll be reading the, another chapter of that, although I know most of y'all don't really care about my readings, but for those of you who do enjoy me doing my audiobook readings, I really appreciate y'all, and I hope that y'all will enjoy what's coming. And last but not least, I hope you guys enjoyed Lark's Lamentation on the Assassin's Creed Odyssey video where he talked about the Cult of Cosmos. Very cool video. Really enjoyed hearing him do it. And just for the record, guys, if it says Lark's Lamentation at the beginning of the video, it's probably my brother doing it. I don't know why some people ask, hey, who, who's speaking here? It's probably Lark. It's probably my brother. So um, that should answer that question. But that's about all we've got planned for now. I will give y'all more updates as we go forward. Of course, one will be coming out next week. But before we go, but before we close off for the day, it's story sharing time. And today I'm going to share a hilarious story with you. This is a joke story. Literally, the, the, let me tell you the backstory of the story first. I got a friend that I met through Deviant Art, um, Nahemi. Now Nahemi actually has her own YouTube channel. She doesn't. She isn't as active on it as I am on mine. But she drew this picture that I'm putting on the screen right now of this boy who looks very uncomfortably at this magical glowing fan. And I kind of laughed at it. So I asked Nami, I said, what is the story behind this fan? And she said, I don't really know. You know, I just, uh, I kind of wanted to ma make this picture about a boy around this magical fan. And so we talked about it a while and slowly we decided, let's make a short story out of that just for fun. What if this boy finds a fan and it's not just a magic fan? We thought about those silly magical girl anime where these girls find these magic weapons or something like that and they go through that Maho Shoujo transformation into magical girls in overly frilly outfits. But what if it was a boy who found one? So we have uh, Beware the Magic Fan, which was originally just a short story about this boy who becomes a Maho Shoujo. But people loved the story so much that we couldn't stop making chapters for it. We just made it into this long-running thing. It's been a gag ever from the beginning. It, it's had its sad kind of deep moments, but it's most of it's just been for fun and jokes and having a good time. 
we've really enjoyed working on this if it at all interests you check it out i'll leave a link in the description it's a silly fun story about this kid just trying to figure out how do i get rid of this thing and should i get rid of it because you know with great power comes great responsibility but do i want this power oh boy what fun what fun anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video that about wraps it up today again don't forget to subscribe check out the teespring channel um don't forget to check out the patreon as well all of those links will be in my about section on my channel um don't forget to like the video and leave a comment um and also uh feel free to go back and check on some of my other videos like uh any response videos that i do my raven writings rooms are always up and you can check out the uh, other heroes and history videos please keep checking out stuff on the channel guys it really helps me out uh gives me money so that i can continue to do this stuff that y'all enjoy so much and again tell your friends and family to subscribe so that we can get the subscriptions we need to grow make money get recognized i love working on this channel i want to keep doing it for as long as possible but that all depends on you guys so thank you guys so much again and i will see you in my next video take care